di melang reale amagela go jobok today i am mapila malachi we are all excited for the elections tomorrow and do check out the c40 section for the latest climate change updates we sent out our crew into the streets to find out what the city of Johannesburg had to say about the elections tomorrow. I, I, I've registered to vote. Uh, I'll be voting for my first time. I think it's, it's very important for us as young people to partake in not only the politics but also the affairs of our country because judging from the way things are going at the moment uh, society really needs young people to stand up and really address the ills of the people. I haven't uh, registered this year only specifically because where I'm staying I have no electricity, there are no toilets, there are no water. You have to go far to get the water. I am registered to vote and I will be voting for the third time this time if I were to include the 2011 local government elections which I participated in. My advice to those who have not registered or those who are not prepared to participate in these elections is that they must go all out and register to vote in the 2016 local government elections and shape the future that they actually want to see in this country. For people who haven't vo uh, registered, they must know that their voice is also important and anyway, a decision will be made, whether you voted or not, a decision will be made, whether you're in favor of the decision or whether you're not in favor. But you must also think that decision will affect your children's children. My name is Steve and this is Joburg Today. Keep in touch with us through social media by following us on Twitter at Joburg Today and liking our Facebook page, joburgtoday.tv. And while on the go, you can check us out on pockettv.mobi. And that is Pocket with an I. Our colleague Nushina Mohammed had an interview with a representative of the IEC in Gauteng. Joining me now in studio is Moses Pizzo, the IEC's Head of Outreach and Communications in the Gauteng province. Moses, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. I'm sure you have lots of work to do in the run-up to elections. Yes, we do. Give us a sense of the preparations that have to take place to ensure a smooth process. Uh, well, it's uh, a lot of, lot of logistical uh, preparation that has mm -hmm. got to take place, including employment of staff, uh, uh, procurement of materials right down to a ballot uh, a ballot box, ballot booth, uh, pens, and when you get into the booth, so that when a, a voter walks into the booth, everything is in place. Mm -hmm. But what are the critical factors that you have to consider to in actually ensure that the process is free and fair? Uh, well, critically, it's that we have to have uh, 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 capable staff that are administering elections at the voting station. So we undertake training throughout, uh, uh, you know, in the uh, pre uh, period pe uh, before in election to ensure that the staff that works at the voting station is staff that is capable, that are able to respond to all the challenges. There are so many challenges that take place at the voting station. So people have got to give uh, some form of comfort to voters that uh, the person that is running the election or administering it is a person that is capable and uh, fit for purpose. And how do you recruit these capable staff members? Uh, what do you look for? What qualities do you look for? First, we need to have people that has got managerial, uh, 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 what you call, uh, experience to admin to manage the, the voting station. But over and above that, we then go into recruiting uh, young uh, 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 people so that we also capacitate them in future. That in future we're having, you know, a, a cohort of people that would be able to be called uh, from time to time to assist us in running elections. We don't run only national and provincial elections. We run local elections. We run by elections. We are forever on the ground. We run uh, elections at universities and everywhere else. So we but need to have this. quite a challenge. Yes, it is. We are permanently on the ground working. So we need mm -hmm. to have this cohort of trained and capable people to assist us in carrying out our mandate. Okay, tell me about this app that we're hearing about, that you've actually launched this app that's going to assist voters. Did it go live? How can it assist the voter? Tell us more. Yeah, see, this is uh, uh, one of the ways that the IC is now uh, joining, you know, uh, providing voter information through the information superhighway that people can then up, uh, access information uh, using their uh, cell phones. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and uh, there's uh, basically three things that one can get through the apps. Number one, you can get voter information where you're registered, uh, you know, if you are registered, registered and so forth. And you can also get voter uh, 
uh, uh, what call uh, first you get vote information, the second one you get uh, information about voting, you know, which parties are participating, candidates list, and so forth and so on. And the third one is really uh, general information, which really speaks about frequently asked questions. You uh, uh, pose a question, you get a response about issues that maybe you want to, to get information about. Okay. Now, South Africans, a lot of South Africans have registered to vote, registered to vote this year. That's according to a recent poll that was published. What does the numbers look like in the city of Johannesburg? Are we seeing an increase in the number of people that have registered to vote? And another question to you around the same issue on numbers, if we have to look at the number of people that made the deadline to register to vote and South Africans that haven't registered to vote, what does it say about voter apathy? Well, look, uh, in terms of stats, there's 31 million people that are, are, are eligible to register to vote in this country. Of that 31 million, 26 are on the voters' roll. So it tells you there's only 6 million people that really are not uh, have not registered for one reason or the other. In, in Joburg alone, there's 1.2 million people on the voters' roll. So it can tell you that uh, the big majority of people that are registered you know, in a locality, like in a municipality, you would find them in Joburg. In uh, Gauteng province, there's 6 million people that register. In fact, uh, Gauteng has got 25% uh, of all the people registered mm -hmm. participating in these elections. Those people are registered in Gauteng. And of that, uh, uh, 6 million, 1.2 million in Joburg, uh, Joburg Metro only. So now you're accommodating all these large numbers in terms of the number of voting stations that you've set up, I'm yes. assuming. And hopefully it would be, there wouldn't be a situation in South Africa like there was in the United Kingdom when South Africans were voting there and had to travel from far and wide and had to stand in queues for hours and you couldn't accommodate all those people. Yeah, look, uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, the Geneva Convention, South Africa, uh, the uh, South African consulate is a, an extension of the South African uh, territory. So because of that, you can only have people re, uh, voting and on South African territory mm -hmm. in uh, overseas countries. Okay. But in terms of this country, we have broken down this country into smaller uh, components into voting districts, which would allow maybe the small numbers around uh, 250 to 3,000 people to vote in a voting district. So the challenges that you saw in Europe, mm -hmm. you would not see them here because the the components have been broken down into smaller uh, in uh, uh, administrative components or the voting districts uh, uh, or the area of South African area has been broken down into smaller uh, administrative components for easy uh, administration of elections. Moses, thank you so much for your time. We hope all your hard work manifests into a smooth, uh, free and fair election for South Africans. We look forward to chatting to you more in studio. Thanks a lot. Hi, my name is Ryan, and this is Joburg Today. And that's it for today's show. Please check out the special focus section to see what is happening in and around Johannesburg. I leave you with a song about Johannesburg called Down Undermining by Dear Reader. Don't forget to vote and enjoy your public holiday. Back in ETV. Hey guys, welcome back to Balcony TV Johannesburg, live from Randlords. I'm your host, Julian, and we're hanging with Sherilyn from Dear Reader. How are you doing? I'm great. How are Good you? Good to have you back in South Africa. Yeah, it's great to be back. I'm enjoying it immensely. Look at this view. It's beautiful, huh? Beautiful city. Now, it's not your first time on Balcony. You've been around the world as well. Yeah, we did it in Hamburg and in London. Excellent. So now it's Johannesburg. What song are you going to play for us? It's called Down Under Mining, and uh, actually it's all about Johannesburg. I read about... Um, the beginnings of the city as a dusty mining outpost and uh, that was pretty inspiring for me. Well, take it away yeah
Don't 